We may have rolled into a new summer year, but frankly, last 12 months for Indian markets have been full of twists and turns and peak and tops. Last 12 months was all about hype and hope, but now I guess reality has dawned on us. So how should investors approach current markets? What about valuations, ideas, themes, liquidity? It's a big jigsaw puzzle. And to put uh, things together in this complicated maze, I guess it's time to unveil the all-important annual conference of Access Capital. India 2020 stars, the ninth edition. And I have with me in our studio the entire team and, and four fine men who've put the entire show together. Dharmesh Mehta, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us to talk about the IPO market and what is going to be the buzz. Thank None you. other than Dr. Subra, uh, Dr. Subramaniam. Chirag is going to walk us through valuations and what should we expect in terms of sectoral theme. And uh, Anirban, my question to you would be, of course, about MA activity. Okay, thanks. So let's start, Dharmesh, uh, with the basic mood point. And the moot point is that a year ago, India was a crowded trade. It was a popular trade. Crude is down 50% in the last one year and markets are flat. On paper, we are the best market, best economy, yet returns are not there. Well, India had a very high expectation. So definitely there was a disappointment on that front when the new government came in because people expected things will happen overnight. It started off well, well by having these two bills getting cleared, which is a mining bill and insurance. But the land bill is when the, the entire reforms got stuck. And from there, it was only a downward hill. So unfortunately, the expectations were not met by the government. But obviously, as we always say, there is hope. And that's why I'm hoping this Diwali will be much better than the last Diwali, which we had. And the government has already shown the intent after the Bihar elections by announcing huge reforms, especially in the power sector and also on the FDI reforms, which is now almost all the sectors are open up for foreign money, which was much needed for the country to get capital from outside. Because as you know, the foreign force haven't been that great this yeah. year. And you want much longer term money rather than short term term money. So I believe the government is addressing the question in a very proper and a strategic manner rather than just giving a short term profits. Because this money will last much longer than the FIL flows. Mm. You know, good news and good prices, they never come together. Right now, news is, is horrible. Let's be real. Earnings are not there. Globally, environment is challenging. China is the center of gravity. But are prices good? The valuations are quite attractive. In fact, if you look at it, you, you can see the last quarter earnings. You know, Despite the top line revenues not coming in, the margins actually saved the companies. So that's what the good part is. Now imagine when the top line revenues start coming in, when the economy takes off, you'll have humongous profit coming to those companies. So on valuation fund, India, I think so, is a very, very attractive market. <coughs> what people were waiting for is the push by the government on the reform side and execution, which is it's a long time you know, due, overdue. I believe once that starts happening, you will see a lot of more money coming in from the foreigners. Mm. Dr. Subra, last 12 months have been both hot and cold for the IPO market. I can talk about an aviation company which has uh, been a terrific success. I can talk about a holding company which got thumped on the day one itself. What could be the trend? What could be the mega trend for the IPO market for this for the coming year? I think what investors are saying very clearly, we like good companies <coughs> at good valuations. They want uncomplicated. So, like you said, the complication of a holding company, people didn't understand and therefore they're saying that I'd rather have the underlying company, if it's possible, directly. So, that's why when you see a great company like Inox Wind, when we took to the market, it was a huge thumping success. Sinjin was a phenomenal success. And we are seeing very clearly, investors are saying, it's, it's easier for us to sell larger stocks, larger IPOs than smaller IPOs. People are coming to us and saying, clearly, show me a deal which I can buy reasonable size in an IPO or in a block or in a QIP. So we are saying that in spite of the fact that you would see that this year probably is the lowest amount of FI flows, if you really look at it, part of the flows is also the negative sales by the PEs which have gone yeah. out. If you take the overall inflows, I think it's been very good. Markets, people, when we talk to them on IPOs, are telling us, come to us with good deals, IPOs, QIPs, any primary market deals and we are there to support it. Mm. And you look at the new sectors which are coming in. Yeah. So you saw just saw the airline getting in, or you just got a, you know, a cafe coffee day, you know, completely different. So people are singing, you know, in that sense. People are, you know, now ready to bet on new sectors. Yeah. And that's why the incremental that's capital right. is going to different businesses, as this business has never raised capital in the last five years. And that's what is happening now is you're seeing humongous interest in new new names. Yeah, niche companies, I guess, are exactly. coming in. And these are not run-off mill companies that is started with infrastructure and next 30 IPOs only from the infrastructure. Sure. Uh, next 12 months, uh, do you think we could see e-commerce, dot-com, digital companies going public? Is there scope for them in next 12 months? 
I am sure because if you really look at it, some of the digital e-commerce companies in India are valued much better than the US. Like say for example, uh, Naukri.com, you know, that's, that's a company in India which is valued much higher than, uh, uh, you know, Monster. So there are opportunities in India there. I'm not so sure whether it will happen in the next 12 months, but definitely we are seeing one or two companies which will come up immediately um, uh, in, in, in the next uh, 12 months. But the big wave of the digital IPOs is going to be in the you know 12 to 18 months down the line rather than tomorrow. Also, you haven't seen the implementation of the ground for the 4G yet. Yes. So that empire, impact of digital is yet to come in. I believe that will be humongous impact. It will be as good as what you saw in the voice, you know, initially when telecom was launched and yeah. the prices came down. Same thing is going to happen in data. So anybody who is, is catering to the digital platform, the content companies, even the, you know, the e-commerce companies, they'll have definitely a huge benefit as soon as when you see that you know, 4G is available and the speeds go up at least 10x, 20x from here. Mm. I'm That's going to get in themes with you, but you know, Chirag, I'm going to first address a very basic question. The very basic question is that earnings are not there. Earnings are getting slashed down with uh, each passing quarter. Sure. When we started this calendar year, expectations were 15 to 17 percent. Sure. What has translated is 5 to 7 percent. Sure. So are investors asking you tough questions that we bought India because of a premium, yeah. because of a, a hope. Sure. That hope has not translated into reality. Yeah, I think the market already reflects that, Nikunj. If you look at uh, you know the 12 months in the market from our last conference to today, uh, you had pr uh, markets falling, you've had time, passage of time, and you've also had expectations getting tempered significantly. Um, those are actually good things for the market. You, you, from a from a phase where you were uh, bullish and you were, you know, you were seeing everything as uh, as great to now expectations completely being muted. Um, for me, with the domestic inflows coming in, with the commodity prices uh, where they are today, and the outlook on the commodity prices, we are actually sitting on what seems like a structural bull run from here. So you could. What could look like, you know, delayed uh, earnings growth, uh, I don't think it's denied. It'll come, and when it does, we'll have a multi-year bull run setting in. But why are earnings not kicking in? If I look at the macro setup, rate cuts have kicked yeah. in. Commodity prices have cracked much more than anybody anticipated. Yeah. Uh, ease of doing business is there. Yeah. Uh, certain government measures we can talk about. A GST not getting implemented, yeah. but there are a dozen other other measures which have also got implemented. Yeah. So if the environment is so strong, yeah. if the environment is so conducive, why are earnings not kicking in? You also have to put in perspective the global uh, environment right now. You have interest rates at sub 2% everywhere else. So if you're an entrepreneur in India, you're worrying about actually putting up a new investment, primarily because you're competing with someone with such low interest rates. So I think uh, that's an evolutionary process. It'll come. Like you said, even on the reform side, that's an ongoing process. So uh, the GST getting delayed um, is a little bit of a concern, but if you see all of the things that the government has already done, I mean, I think the, the Uday scheme that they've done right mm -hmm. now for the discoms is a single biggest game changer if implemented correctly. You're, you're saving the banking system $30 billion, mm -hmm. uh, freeing that up for the banking system to deploy it further. You know, these are, these are significant things that are happening. Yeah, if, it, if, if that thing is implemented, it is, uh, I, I guess, mother of all the reforms. Yeah. Uh, Come in with the P aspect because, frankly, the current year has been all about P investments. It's not about, uh, it, it's about, uh, it's not about equity investment. It is about action which is happening in private space. Uh, private space. Yeah, uh, Nikunj, a uh, couple of things is happening. If you look at it, uh, as you rightly said, that a lot of P things uh, traction has improved. If I uh, going by the number, first H one. Uh, reported number is almost uh, 360 deals has happened in the yes. P space, uh, which is uh, amount of around 11 billion dollar, which is very very substantial amount. Though there is uh, some exit is happening, that is quite natural because they got a window now to uh, uh, reduce their uh, investment life. But uh, coming to the investment side, if you look at it, the 50 percent almost 48 to 50 percent investment has gone to that IT IDS sectors, yeah. which is very very hot stuff. Because you will see that Flipkart, Snapdeal, Ola, all this deal has happened in this period. So there is a lot of interest on that space space because they all everybody is feeling there's a good valuation opportunity is there in a going forward. And this is again the it will be driven by the e-commerce platform, IT platform, what Dharmesh has said. So uh, when the 4G comes, will be that users of all these things will be much much more uh, this one. So that is one. And second, if you see the second base sectors in the P space, which is coming after this, is a quite, uh, it's, a, it's a healthcare as well as energy sector. When I talk about energy, energy means including the green energy. So a couple of 25 to 50 deals has happened, both the sectors put together. 
They are also, uh, energy sector also attract around $2 billion, whereas uh, your healthcare sector has attracted a $1 billion investment. So things are happening in manufacturing, followed by the manufacturing sectors. So it is interesting time. There are uh, investors which is taking the exit at this moment because they feel that their average life of three years to it has gone to five years. Uh, their gross return, they are getting around 8%. If the McKinsey report is saying that 8% they have got. So they feel that this is the right time to have when that the opportunity is there, sentiment is positive, secondary market available, strategic investment is also opportunity is there. So they should take that exit now so that they can show their investors that exit is possible. So I think this is a very interesting year for that P perspective. Mm. Why flows have been so poor in this year? I mean, when I say flows, at least the foreign flows. Foreigners have been a fair weather friends, whether it is 2009 or 2013, when world was falling apart, they were the, India was the natural destination, the first port of choice. Why flows are so, so patchy? The thing is also have to put India in the global perspective. <clears throat> because you see in the, you know, overall the global environment has been very, very choppy. And people have a risk of trade kind of a situation. When there's a risk of trade, obviously the new markets get a beating, especially and especially a market which has done very well. Though you may say one year perspective is not done great, but if you look at 18 months perspective, India has been fabulously well pre-election period. So there'll be some profit booking happening and the money flow then goes back to dollar. There's no competition to US dollar. So unfortunately for India, we've been fighting the global environment more rather than the local environment. If it was only on local environment, despite what things have not happened, I think India has done very well compared to other markets in the world. Mm. And interest rate trending downwards, commodities, you know, looking bearish, even continues to be bearish. I think India is a safe destination. And that's why you've seen a lot of money moving into the safer sectors rather than the sectors which are impacted by commodities or maybe for government reforms mainly. Those sectors have been on the way out, while the defensive like HDFC banks and the pharmas have continued to do very well. Mm. But do you think liquidity or global liquidity in the next uh, 12 to 18 months will remain tight in the couple of factors? Number one, the sovereign pool funds are drying up now. B, emerging market as an asset class has been a non-performing asset class. It is not getting you know, too much of inflows. I read a news report a uh, you know, couple of days ago where Goldman Sachs has decided to shut shop one of the BRIC fund. So obviously the outlook for A, emerging market is rather poor. And one source of wealth, which is the sovereign wealth, is not drying up. That's true, but if you look at India, you know, you never look at India as an index because its heavyweights are mainly PSU banks, you know, Reliance and ONGC. So a lot of commodity and PSU banks heavy is the index. So if you cow them out, you look at the index performance, it will be very, very good. And you know foreigners generally are invested in the, those segments kind of names rather than the PSU banks and the heavy oil or commodity kind of names in the last one, 12 to 18 months. So if you look at them, the investors have made a lot of money. That's why you see a lot of profit booking happening in those names. So India, is, as an overall, if you look at the index, gives you a very different picture. But when you dissect it properly, where the foreign money is going in, I think that they made fabulous return even in US dollar terms. And eventually when things start happening in India, that will be the only economy in the world doing so well. So the money chases growth, and money chases where you're going to make money. So clearly when people are confident, when all these reforms which have been announced have been allowed and executed on the ground, the money will come back. Chirag, money always chases growth and as of now there is there is visibility only in two or three large sectors and even those sectors are getting polarized. From an auto I can pick up in Maruti, yeah. from the pharma space I can pick up a Lupin, I can pick up an Infosys or for that matter in uh, you know HCL tech from the IT space. Yeah. Indian markets have been polarized for the last two or three years within sectors. Now do you think they can get more polarized within stocks? Well, the, you know what you can see is uh, the start of as the government starts spending now, you'll see some of the shifting even come towards the infrastructure space. Uh, the other theme that we really like right now is just the whole broadband connectivity and how things will change for India. Um, once you have fiber in your home uh, for, let's say, the, at least the large metros and then the tier two and three cities, that will be a before and after event for India. I mean, your connectivity in terms of the way you consume content or the way you, you know, your banking or, you know, shopping, all of that is likely to change. And these are new sectors that are likely to come up as well. So yes, while we have been concentrated on a few sectors or polarized towards a few sectors, there are other sectors that valuations demand that people look at them right now, as well as some others that are newly emerging sectors, which will then bring investor interest back. So I, you know, markets will reward rate of change. And I think uh, India, with where we are today, uh, this is where the change is happening. This is, you, you may, may be slow, slower than you would have expected, 
But I think prices are already reflecting a lot of that. Mm. And in any bull market, the new bull market, there are different leaders. Of course. You never have the same leaders. There are different sectors. So this is a bull market. Well, you're in the beginning of the bull market. So you're almost on the upward trend of the bull market now. I believe your things are going to bottom out in the so next So what are the leadership quarters. sectors? I, as I told you, digital, whatever is going to be sold on digital will be the new leaders. So whether it's banking, you know, somebody who's providing services on the digital platform is definitely going to be the big leader. A flip cards or a snap deals were not even born before three, four years, right? And today's date, the valuation are humongous for those companies. So you will have those new leaders coming in. A Sun Pharma was not even, you know, people even to look at in the 90s or something like that. And today it's been the largest market cap of the country. Hmm. So clearly you're going to see new, you know, new ch champions coming out in this hmm. bull market. Too. Dr. Subra, one mega trend is going to be formation of small banks, payment bank, technology banks. That will change the landscape for customers. That will change uh, landscape for the entire banking sector per se. DCB two weeks ago went on record and said we are scared of small banks and we want to expand more. What are your thoughts on what how disruptive this entire small camp, uh, small uh, you know, payment banking space would be? Because currently markets are fascinated with this word disruption. Everybody is trying to focus on the next disruption. Exactly. I think it's a very interesting thing what uh, Dr. Raghuram Rajan has now leashed, unleashed upon the Indian markets. Uh, you need to understand three things. <clears throat> the first thing is that if you take the last 20 years, while the new private sector banks, the, the Axis and the HDFC banks of the world, have not taken too much of asset share yeah. of the overall banking industry, you will find that they've actually taken a huge market share of the profits. So business done well, focused on profits, not just on the assets have delivered well. I think you're going to see a similar set of a disruption which is coming in from the new generation banks. Whether they're the payment banks where the telcos have a huge amount of a uh, base, or whether it's a new smaller, the banks which are focused on the micro on the small sector, or the new banks like the Bandhan and the IDFCs which are coming in. You're, you're going to see these have, have going to have, together with the access and the HDFCs, I would think that the rate of change of the assets moving in from the public sector to these banks are going to be significantly higher. What's also going to change essentially is the liability side of the banks. And I think that the deposit side of the banks, and I think what the RBI has done very well is to ensure that the deposits are very safe. They've asked the payment banks, not only they cannot invest, they also have to take a deposit insurance. So telling the investors, the depositors and the savers that a deposit, a payment bank is as good a place as any other bank for them to save the money in. And I think that this is going to be important. The third thing is that apart from these, there are also going to be the wallet makers in the digital space. So the digital space, which are not even banks, the wallet providers are going to be competition for uh, this one. And finally, don't forget that the mutual funds yes. will become big in terms of overall uh, disruption also. So it's, we have still not seen that come through. So all of this is going to be a big game changer for the entire banking sector. So if you put all the four factors you mentioned, who will be the final winner? I think the final winner is going to be the guy who's going to be in across all the places. And I think that that's where people like <coughs> a Access Bank or a HDFC Bank is already in digital. So big banks already, will be able to grow more. Yeah, big yeah, banks will point. be able to yeah. grow more. At a lower cost. At, at, the at technology cost. base is very strong. Mm -hmm. Where the new guys are going to come in and take market share is that if the public sector banks do not change for the better, is going to take more. But then the government is also doing things, like what they've done in Bank of Baroda, for yeah. example, have a private sector chairman and a private sector CEO coming in. Whether they can alter the way the whole bank's going to come in, if they don't, these are the guys who are going to take market share from the public sector banks. Plus the overall market will expand yeah. because of the reach of the technology. Right. So if people I, don't you know, estimate the overall mm -hmm. impact which happens. It's not about, like when you had this whole price fall in the telecom side, no operator went bust. In yes. fact, the market expanded big time. When the telephone prices, the cell phone prices came down from 16 rupees to 10 pesa and 5 pesa, and people thought the telecom operators will go bust, it actually happened the reverse. So the central theme of this conference is that focus on companies, businesses, and sectors and themes which will benefit because of digital rollout, whether it's data consumption or Absolutely. banks which are going digital, or companies which would be embracing digital technology. Uh, what about the dirty picture? When I say dirty picture, infrastructure government related sectors. So I just want to add to a point that you were making before. If you just look at it from the capital mar markets perspective as well, all of this reach as it unleashes just higher savings and capital flow, right? The narrative for India could change 
from mm. us focusing on just FII flows to then talking about the domestic mm. uh, savings and the domestic yes. investments into the Indian capital markets. So which <clears throat> makes us even more bullish that you you now have technology assisting all of this. You have a great time to enter the, in, to come into the markets and you have all of the factors you know playing out to be there as well. So that's that's a great time for us to be in these markets. Um, as far as you know, the dirty picture, like you mentioned, it, like this is actually one of the sectors that we were talking about. If you think about the government reform, uh, we're already hearing so much about uh, investments that are happening on the roadside, right? There are companies that will benefit from that. Um, you have you've come in through a phase where people expected that overnight uh, we'll have roads built out and you know the factories will start and you know airports will be built out, etc. Obviously, that was not going to happen. Hard infrastructure was always going to be far more difficult to roll out. Um, the government has made a great start with that. And we act, we expect that a lot more of these companies will come to the capital markets, they'll raise money, but that'll be growth capital. They will then be able to uh, build these plans out. And so it's not, it, it looks like it's a dirty picture when you look at it independently in terms of what's happening in the space, but when you when you overlay the valuations on it, it's not so bad really. And Actually, you, amount, you, sorry, you can see the amount of deals that happened in the last one year yeah. on the road, very quietly and people didn't even notice that. A lot of these companies have been able and to And these stocks money. have done very well. Absolutely. The stocks yeah. have done very, very well, well and the deals have also happened mm -hmm. and deals will continue to happen in the thing. And if this Vudai uh, thing, like Chirag mentioned earlier, gets implemented, you will see a lot of fundraising happen from the power sector as well. So who will benefit thing. because of Vudai? Will it be power ancillary? Will it be power transmission? Will it be power distributor? Because utility ain't going to make money in the first stage. Yeah. So, so what have you done with Vudai, right? You First thing you said, coal linkages. Yeah. Second thing is that lower losses for transmission distribution. And, and the third bit you said is lower interest rates for the SEBs. What you're doing is freeing up capital even for the banks. Today, what, what those the $30 billion that I thought were bad assets suddenly don't look as bad. The banks have the ability to then again lend, lend these out. So you, you know, a multiple to the book for these banks then starts expanding as well. Um, the end user benefits from this because you're now, you know, you're saying that there's going to be lesser power cuts because the transmission, if you fix the transmission TND issue, right, India won't have power cuts. So the, the problem was identifying really what the main areas of the issue were. And, right? attacking it. and then attacking that. They've identified it brilliantly. The resolve is very clear. Now we just have to see how, how they go ahead and implement this. I mean, the banking sector is the Achilles heel right now, right, because of all of these issues. But that's an identified problem. So we, you know, over the next six to eight months, you will, you'll still see some names coming through or coming out. But I think beyond that, as we understand that this is the problem, both public and private, you can then start working on them. And for the names, you have to come to Access Capital Conference. So you are the architect of this conference. So why don't you walk us through uh, the key highlights? Well, if you look at it, you know, we have covered a gamut of companies which actually give you views into almost entire India. Mm. As we say, one side, the government is attacking all the, you know, dirty picture, what you call them, and trying to make it much better than it is possible. Other side, technology and the whole digital space will ensure that the growth comes in for India for those companies who are attacking on that front. So overall, if you look at a very bullish picture for India, which I can paint right now, you're going to have these two engines, which are actually going to spur the economy. And that, I think, is very much possible in the next 18 to 24 months. Let's not say that it's going to happen in 6 to 12 months. All these things take time. It doesn't happen overnight. So if you look at our conference, you've got almost everybody there. A private sector bank, a, com a company which is going to be benefiting from the digital space. You've got, you know, private, even you've got the coal secretary coming down and giving you the views on what's happening on the coal linkages, which is very, very important for India's growth. You cover a commodity company, which is going to, at JSW, which is going to talk to you on the dirty that's picture. That's really dirty picture. <laughs> yeah, but then that's how you're going to survive that kind of yes. tough times. And it has done that, you know, very nicely. So you get a good view from the one who's in trouble. So you're not only talking about the rosy picture, we are trying to also get out those companies who are in trouble and trying to get out of that in a very nice manner. Then you've got another ones where this whole new gen banks panel is there. We have an infra panel, we have a consumption panel. So almost everything possible in India which you're looking at today, which looks exciting, is there at our conference. And why not? Because India's got a lot of engines and all of yeah. them have to, you know, hum together. And don't forget the star of this year, which is the Maruti. So here with Dr. Bhargava coming in and giving his perspective of life and about the company and going forward. So we almost are entire India for you at this mm. conference. So if I have to summarize our today's interaction, the theme of this conference is that stick to good old, good old. Earning recovery has not been smart, but yes, earning recovery cannot be denied. And the margin of safety, if you are a first-time buyer right now, is with you yeah. because a lot of bad news is in the price. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Bottom line Absolutely. is buy India is the theme coming again. Sell what then?
I think you need to buy in here. <laughs> you need to sell your fixed deposits. I think that's the answer I was looking for. The sure. alternates are doing so badly yeah, that you have yeah. no other option but to come to Absolutely. India. Absolutely. Absolutely. Chinmayan, good luck with the conference. Thank you for joining us and thank you for coming to our studio. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.